work energy theorem let's go ahead and take a look so by definition the work energy theorem states as follows the work done on an object by a net force is equal to the change in the object's kinetic energy the work done by a net force on an object the net work is equals to the object's change in its kinetic energy right the change in kinetic energy being kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial we can actually derive this equation so that you can see how it comes about but essentially this is what the work energy theorem is saying if there is some work that has been done on an object by a net force you can take a look at the object's change in kinetic energy and that will give you the net work done on the object by the net force okay so let me show you how it comes about initially we agreed that work net is equals to f net multiplied by delta x multiplied by cos of theta so take a look at this if the net force is in the same direction as the displacement of the object then we're going to have cos of zero which is one so we end up with f net multiplied by delta x from newton's second law we know fully well that f net is just m multiplied by the acceleration multiplied by delta x so let's see how we can go from this equation to the network done on an object being equals to the object's change in its kinetic energy let's concentrate on this a delta x we just need one more equation and we would have proved this theorem okay from equations of motions we know fully well that vf squared is equals to vi squared plus 2a delta x well this is if we look at the horizontal axis if we look at the vertical axis obviously it's going to be delta y but take a look at this if we rearrange we get vf squared minus vi squared being equals to 2a delta x we are interested in a delta x so what we will do here is to divide both sides by 2 so we're going to have a delta x being equals to vf squared divided by 2 minus vi squared divided by 2 this is what we're going to substitute into this equation right here if you go ahead and do that let me just do it on the side we're going to have the network being equals to m multiplied by in place of a delta x we're going to have vf squared divided by 2 minus vi squared divided by 2 multiply it out we get a half mvf squared minus a half mvi squared and this is the work energy theorem so in different cases you might have to use this work energy theorem if you're interested in the final velocity after the um, network done on an object you can always run to the work energy theorem right let's go ahead and take a look at conservative and non-conservative forces so there we go by definition a conservative force is a force for which the work done in moving an object between two points is independent of the path taken let me remind you when i was showing you different ways of calculating the work done by gravity i did mention this that whether you take the incline or you take the height the work done by gravity is going to be the same because gravity is a conservative force it is a force in which the work done in moving an object between the two points is independent of the path taken right we have gravitational force as an example elastic force in a spring and electrostatic forces but in work energy and power we mainly concentrate on the gravitational force so gravitational force is the conservative force that we're going to be paying most of our attention to so the work done by these conservative force or by conservative forces is equals to minus the change in the object's potential energy 
is equals to the change in the object's potential energy we can also derive this but for the sake of time let's just agree that the work done by conservative forces is equal to the object's change in its potential energy not the network right the work done by conservative forces is equal to the object's change in its kinetic energy so that is conservative force let's go ahead and take a look at non-conservative force a non-conservative force is a force in which the work done in moving an object between two points depends on the path taken right in a conservative force is independent of the path taken and in a non-conservative force is dependent on the path taken that is the work done in moving an object between two points for example frictional force a resistance tension in a cord so on and so on we also have an equation for that the work done by non-conservative forces is equal to the change in the object's potential energy plus the change in the object's kinetic energy. There's just one last thing I want to show you before we look at examples where we apply these theorems. So take a look at this. The principle of conservation of mechanical energy. This is grade 10 work. It says that the total mechanical energy in an isolated system remains constant. The total mechanical energy in an isolated system remains constant. What does that mean? All right. So we know that the work done by non-conservative forces is equal to the object's change in its potential energy plus the object's change in its kinetic energy but if our system is isolated then the work done by non-conservative forces is zero we end up having zero is equal to the change in the object's potential energy plus the change in the object's kinetic energy but the change in the object's potential energy is potential energy final minus potential energy initial right let's put this in one bracket plus kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial but i'm going to take the initial potential energy and the initial kinetic energy to the left hand side if i do that we're going to have the initial potential energy plus the initial kinetic energy being equals to the final potential energy plus the final kinetic energy this is what we refer to as the conservation of mechanical energy the total mechanical energy at point a is equal to the total mechanical energy at point b we've went through a couple of things so let's just go ahead and reflect on that we say that work net is equal to f net multiplied by delta x multiplied by cos of theta all right and then we also see that we can calculate the work done by the individual forces work one plus work two plus work three so on and so on all right and then comes in our theorems we talked about the work energy theorem of which we said that the network done on an object is equal to the object's change in its kinetic energy. And then the work done by non-conservative forces, the change in its potential energy plus the change in its kinetic energy. And lastly, the conservation of mechanical energy. So the mechanical energy at point A is equal to the mechanical energy at point B. We know that the mechanical energy is just the potential energy plus the kinetic energy. So these equations that we have here, we refer to them as the energy principles. Energy principles. If you come across equation and it says calculate x, y, z, whatever you can be asked to calculate, and it says use energy principle 
you're supposed to use one of these three equations but just a tip use this equation if you have an object that is in free fall right if the only force acting on the object is weight feel free to use this equation but if that's not the case i would advise that you use one two you use those two equations at the top but only in a situation where we have only weight acting on the object then you can use the conservation of mechanical energy technically you can use it when that is not the case but it just gets a bit more complicated so i highly advise that you only use it when there's only weight acting on the object what i've seen for the most part where this equation works this equation can also work right um when we solve some problems i'm gonna solve the equation using both equation uh one and two just to show you that uh, they all work so right that is that let's go ahead and take a look at a few examples where we're gonna use these energy principles